Knowledge versus wisdom, the business aspect. Hello again, everybody. I'm Eli's dad with Project Eli, where we educate, lead, and inspire. And you're invited to join us for part two of the letter I've written to Eli concerning knowledge versus wisdom. Eli, let us continue our chit chat concerning knowledge versus wisdom. And since this is a letter, I'll be, I'll be providing all the chat and you don't even have to do shit, except pay attention. Let's start with knowledge is power. Not. Eli, we live in a world where knowledge doubles every two and a half to three years. If knowledge were truly power, we would be the most empowered people in history. Question, how empowered do you feel? It would be more accurate to say, Wisdom is power. Knowledge is power? No. Knowledge on its own is nothing but the application of useful knowledge. Now that is powerful. And that's a quote from Rob Liano. Now having previously focused our attentions on knowledge versus wisdom in the arena of relationships, let's pivot a bit and examine knowledge versus wisdom in the business world. Eli, in life, you're going to find many people that are highly educated. They got lots of letters after their name. You'll find that many lettered folks know most of the answers. Knowledge is knowing the answers. Wisdom is asking the right questions. One of the questions that a wise person asks continuously is, is the action that I'm about to take or the comment that I'm about to make going to bring me closer to achieving the desired outcome that I seek? Knowledge is knowing what to say or what to do. Wisdom is knowing the most productive time to say or do it. Let's talk about asking the right questions. Let's talk about asking questions, period. The number one reason that people are unsuccessful is that they're not asking the right questions. In fact, they're not asking any questions. Now, many people know that they're working, but not what they're working. So, what do you do for a living? Or, what do you do? Now, too many people robot robotically respond to that question with their source of income. In many cases, their jobs are the least favored part of their life. Perhaps a better question would be, what is your life all about? What do you want? I want to make money. Well, as Tony Robbins likes to say, okay, here's a buck. Get out of here. The clarity of your question and the answer are some of life's most limiting elements. In fact, most of the time when people limit what they can do, it's because they're not asking any question whatsoever. They're victims of their own self-imposed limitations. This is not keeping in tune with nature. Human beings, Eli, are the only species that does not seek maximum growth at all times. How tall will a tree grow? As tall as it can. Unfortunately, our schools, our parents, and our quote-unquote friends constantly reinforce a limiting nature. Now, as a child, you had no limitations, at least in your mind. You could visualize yourself flying like Superman, or performing like Jay-Z, or shooting like Steph Curry, or landing on the moon. In short, as a child, you were an explorer, a dreamer. You were, I don't have any limitations, being. That is, until you were told, taught, informed, trained, persuaded, and advised that you were limited. So no questions, please. Now, did you ever stop to think what Jay-Z, Steph Curry, and Neil Armstrong, first man to walk on the moon, were dreaming about? Well, I've got some good news and some bad news. The bad news is that you're no longer a child and that you grew up believing you are limited. The good news is that you do have superpowers, Mr. Kent. Those superpowers are your imagination and the ability to ask the appropriate question and take action with the answer. 
This is Dwayne Owens. I quote, The results of knowledge without application results in nothing at all. Do what you know better to do. Unquote. If you don't synthesize knowledge, scientific journals become spare parts catalogs for machines that are never built, says Arthur Marshall. Now, Brandon Burchard describes knowledge versus wisdom, those that struggle from those that succeed, those that have self-imposed limitations from those that think beyond boundaries, those that whine about their lack of resources versus those that champion resourcefulness, in short, those who proclaim it can't be done from those that ask, how can it be done in this way? Once again, this is Brandon Burchard, whom I greatly admire. Those who succeed and those <coughs> excuse me, those who succeed and those who perpetually struggle think so differently. For example, number one, when it's easy to stop momentum by making the excuse, I don't know how to do that, successful people say, it's my mission to go learn how. They make a to-do item on their agenda to go learn the area they have a deficiency in. Second, when unsuccessful people quit by saying, I don't have that, meaning enough resources, assets, followers, whatever, successful people say, then it's my time to go build that they immediately start building the reality that they desire. Not talking, not waiting, building. Third, when it's easy to say, well, I'm not like them, so talented, so natural, so skilled, so lucky, then that's the time that the successful people say, it's my time to grow into my best self to become the person who would deserve to succeed like that. They focus on personal development, not excuses. They create a learning plan. They forge new habits. They get to work on their character and discipline. At some point, we must elevate and say, I must change and take charge in order to advance toward my dreams. I can't wait for circumstances to change. It's time I challenge myself and bend reality to my will. These thoughts can change your life. Once again, that's the great Brendan Burchard. Now, you know, big guy, opportunities are seldom labeled. Excellence is frequently avoided by not asking the question, how can I do that? Books may be the most valuable treasure of knowledge, but it is the human mind that turns that knowledge into wisdom. And that's Abhabjit Nascar. First thing I would do would change my name. Anyway, another question that you must continually ask is, why? Why are we in business? Why does the public need our products or services? Why is our business ascending or descending? These are questions that will keep you on track for your desired outcomes. Too often, we forget why we are in business in the first place, and we focus on fine-tuning procedures and padding statistics. Knowledge is making a system more efficient. Wisdom is making the system more effective in serving the needs of why are we in business? If business is descending, seize the data to find out where and why. Then ask, how can we change data to find out, then ask, then ask how can we change the system to make it more effective in serving the question, why are we in business? If your products or services are obsolete, you need new products. 
If the delivery system of your products or service is obsolete, you need a new delivery system. You've got to change your paradigm. Adopt the view that you are the consumer or adopt the view that you're the owner of the company. Adopt a different viewpoint. How can we tweak our product or service or our delivery system to better serve the reason why we're in business or make it more convenient for our customer? You may want to ask Netflix, Federal Express, Southwest Airlines, the online dating services, the cell phone industry, ESPN, Uber, Facebook, Google, Apple, and countless others that have all tweaked an existing concept and changed an industry. Wayne Dyer tells us, if you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. Rick Warren says, we are products of our past, but we don't have to be prisoners of it. Stephen Covey, to change ourselves effectively, we first had to change our perceptions. Benjamin Franklin, I think you've heard of him, Eli. All highly competent people continually search for ways to keep learning, growing, and improving. They do that by asking why. After all, the person who knows how will always have a job, but the person who knows why will always be the boss. Now my final thoughts concerning knowledge versus wisdom are directed to the power of creativity. If the amount of knowledge available to us today is greater than it's ever been, then why do most people feel like they have less control over their lives instead of feeling more empowered? The most critical element that separates knowledge versus wisdom is the ability to be creative. Let me emphasize that create creativity is indeed an ability. It is one of the superpowers that we all possess, but seldom employ. This is why there are so many that have knowledge, but so few that have wisdom. The secret to unlocking the penthouse of wisdom lies in how we use our brains. Let me illustrate the way this works. Now at the library, they offer internet availability to their patrons. Included in that capability is a sensor that censors naughty material from being accessed by the public. Now that's a useful tool for a public entity. Unfortunately, most people use their brains in exactly the same way. Let me explain that. Now you're aware, of course, Eli, that there are two different ways that your mind works. One is the conscious mind and the other is the subconscious mind. The conscious mind has its own sensors that censor your ideas from the practical to the impractical. This sensor places limitations on your conscious thoughts in a very judgmental way. If your judgment or influences, that's limitations either self-imposed or imposed by friends, by relatives, business associates, or even by enemies, tell your brain that an idea is dumb or impossible, that's ample encouragement for your brain to move on to something more practical. <clears throat> Excuse me. Your subconscious mind is a completely different animal. It has no sensors that censor. The subconscious mind has no limitations and no boundaries. Your imagination is free to explore for solutions completely unshackled. Let's define the unsolved opportunity, the problem, and identify the solution. Now, when you travel from one country to another, son, you need a passport. When you travel from the conscious state of mind to the unconscious state of mind, sleep, the boundary is frequently blurry due to fatigue. If you're a person that has a singleness of purpose, your mind is occupied by one thought, one goal, one driving force, and one singular focus. Success pundits, the most famous of whom is Napoleon Hill, author of Think and Grow Rich, tell us that singleness of purpose is an essential element to achievement. Further, 
we're told that when employed, singleness of purpose produces a sixth sense. Now that can be interpreted as receiving help and inspiration from the Creator or the universe. Intense focus produces this sixth sense, an answer or a series of events that seem to come out of nowhere and places events in their proper order for achieving the desired outcome. In today's world of multi-distraction, there's very seldom a singleness of purpose. The question of what outcome am I seeking is asked infrequently and dispassionately. When people are passing through the boundary from the conscious mind to the subconscious mind, their thoughts are typically a review of the past day's events. They think of all the things that didn't go the way they wanted them to go. They think about all the people that treated them unfairly. They think about all the stuff that's going on in their life that they wish wasn't happening. This is the passport that they carry from the conscious mind through the checkpoint to the subconscious mind. When you have singleness of purpose, by definition, you're thinking about solving the issues related to that one purpose as you cross the border to subconsciousness. You're priming the subconscious mind to use its unlimited capacity to solve the issues related to that individual focus. The result is that the sixth sense, that part of your mind that works without censorship, is enabled to produce unencumbered solutions. That five minutes of time where your mind is being transformed from consciousness to subconsciousness is critical for the creative process to work at full strength. The value of the creative mind is the difference between having answers and having solutions. It is the difference between knowledge and wisdom. Eli, if it seems that some people have more brains than other people, it's not their quantity of brain matter. It's the difference between using a handsaw or an electric saw. It's the power of the cut and not the volume of teeth. Before you go to sleep each night, in that final five minutes before you cross the border, make sure that you focus on outcomes that you want to see happen. See yourself performing the deed, accomplishing the goal, and crossing the finish line to solutions you haven't completely solved yet. Stamp your passport with creative ink and allow your brain to maximize its creative superpower. Be wise, my son. Love, Dad. Our thought for the day is from Machona Diweyo. Knowledge is a tenant in the house of wisdom. And because we never end our meeting on a philosophical note, get out there and charge! I'm Eli's dad.